for all of the English only speakers out there, typing on a keyboard is fairly straightforward. You press the letter on your keyboard and the letter appears on your screen. And the same is going to be true for any other language that uses the Latin script, for example, German. But what about languages that don't? What about something like Japanese, Korean, Arabic, or any other language out there that has a completely different character set? For these languages, they rely on what are known as input methods. These take what you type on the keyboard and then convert them into another form through software and show the text on the screen that you intended to write. However, even for Latin script, there is still a use for input methods. Handwriting recognition, taking handwritten text and then converting that into a form usable on a computer, or something you probably use every single day. On your phone, a virtual keyboard. This device does not have a physical keyboard where individual hardware presses indicate a specific key being pressed. Instead, the entire keyboard is done in software and an input method converts those software presses into text usable on that system. Basically think of an input method as a way to enter text into a computer without necessarily relying on a keyboard. Now, on the Wayland side, Input methods are supported, and for fairly narrow use cases, they work well enough. If you want to write Japanese text, you can go and do so. However, there are some fundamental design flaws that need to be addressed. Also, there are three different protocols in play. Different desktops and different applications and different input methods support varying levels of the protocol. And all of this is the fault of one developer. Now, I'm not blaming this person. They are blaming themselves. This blog post is a write-up of a Fostum talk. Wayland's input method is broken and it's my fault. Now, as of 2020, which is the last time that anything actually reasonably changed in this space, this was the breakdown of the protocols. Virtual Keyboard Unstable V1, used in WL Roots, designed by me, based on the WL Keyboard interface. Input Method Unstable V2, used in WL Roots, based, designed by me, based on Text Input Unstable V3, and Input Method Unstable V1. And then, Text Input Unstable V3, accepted in Wayland Protocols, designed by me, based on GTK text input by Carlos Ganacho. I believe is how you say that, but I'm probably completely wrong. And on text input unstable v1. This is the best part. Whilst this is the one that is accepted in Wayland protocols, due to these ones also existing, some desktops and some applications only support these protocols. So, you know, it's a little bit of a mess. And all of this input method stuff stems back to their work on the Librem 5. My encounter with input methods started with the GNU Linux based Librem 5 phone when I got hired to make sure people can actually type on it. As you can see, the phone has no keyboard. That would make entering text difficult on a typical Linux computer. Even if it did have a physical keyboard, if they wanted to support input outside of just Latin script, they would still need to do this. Thankfully, we're not the first who needed to enter text without depending on a physical keyboard. The solutions to that are collectively called input methods. We already covered this before. But how do we place an input method within the context of a GNU Linux operating system? Consider Wayland, which has been chosen as the centerpiece of the user interface of the Librem 5. Wayland is a set of protocols connecting applications to the user by means of outputs, like the graphical display and inputs, the mouse and keyboard. It doesn't cover anything relating to sound though, or joysticks for some reason. Should joysticks be in Wayland? Mm, probably not. Probably, that's usually a thing for like the specific game engines. My task was to find an alternative to typing, so it would cover some of the tasks that a keyboard typically does. That suggests that Wayland is indeed the right place to put an input method in place of the keyboard. Now, it's not like this person was the first one to try and solve the input method problem on Wayland. There was already ZWP input method unstable v1 and v2. Nowadays, these protocols are not in use. However, Back then, there were some write-ups and some documentation about using them. Here is a KWIN post 
about 5.7. If we search for ZWP, you can see V2 was being considered back then as well. And there's also this virtual keyboard issue as well. Someone in here mentions that the keyboard doesn't actually work. And someone says, hey, maybe we can try out this protocol and maybe this will deal with the problem. But they hadn't looked into it much beyond the Western samples. These two existing protocols were very basic and didn't really cover the actual needs of non-trivial input methods. I decided to update them and create improved versions. This is where it gets much worse. I embedded mistakes within the protocols, so no matter how hard you try, you can't use them correctly. And these are the protocols with the design flaws that are in use right now. Mistake number one, being too conservative. A user of a modern keyboardless mobile phone expects the on-screen keyboard to do more than just text input. Actions like moving the cursor within a text field, moving to the next one, or submitting the form are not related to typing, they don't produce text. Yet, because of the expectation, the tech stack on the Librem 5 had to support this. I decided to not introduce too many changes at the same time, and reuse an experimental keyboard emulation protocol that we supported for other reasons. That protocol would be used to submit just the non-text actions. It looked great until it became clear that it's a dead end. To understand why, you have to have a look at how keyboard protocols work. What the user wants is to submit text. With a text input protocol, it's easy. Entering the text, whatever this says, which is mistake in Polish, would look something like this. Except not really, but a keyboard is not at its core a device to enter text but to press keys. It's concerned with buttons and whether they were pressed and released. Our example looks more like key down, shift, key down, B, key up, B, key up, shift, alt, grave, key down, alt, grave, key down, L, and so on. In reality though, the buttons don't even have names, but numbers that need to get resolved to names. It looks more like this right here so on and so forth. That's not the entirety of the text. There's a lot more than that. Now the tables responsible for resolving button numbers to actual text are called key maps, and they are the problem here. There are keyboards that support multiple scripts. A button can be labeled with a Q and backwards N with a squiggle above it. I don't know what this is. Somebody let me know. You'll see this with Japanese keyboards, for example. You have the alphabet there, and then hiragana on the same keys. Even though its number can't be changed, the user is responsible for telling the software to use the currently intended key map. Then there are custom keyboards. Those can send arbitrary key numbers as well, but there's no guarantee the button labeled P on one sends the same number as a button labeled P on another. Again, the user must indicate the intended key map. An emulated keyboard is kind of like a custom keyboard, needing a custom key map independent of any physical keyboards that might be connected. But Wayland combines all keyboard events into a single stream before giving them to an application. So if you press the squiggly N on this keyboard and the Q on this keyboard, they are both sent to the application and it's like, I don't know what you're actually intending to press. That means the application must always have the correct key map for every key press. This works until you consider the user might want to press multiple keys on multiple distinct keyboards at the same time. Long story short, Wayland maintainers told me that it's basically impossible to make this work due to corner cases, and they won't accept the keyboard emulation protocol. This is bad. A protocol without Wayland buy-in will not get widespread adoption, and we must support non-text events if we want to meet users' expectations about how a phone on-screen keyboard works. This makes emulating keyboards a dead end, and this mistake results in having no viable solution for the phone use case. This line right here is a big part of the reason why I didn't really take the X11 Compat Protocols repo seriously, because if you're trying to do things outside of upstream Wayland, they're probably never going to be implemented in the desktops that actually matter. Not all is bad though. There has been some talk about an actions protocol to cover those needs. It's still unclear, but it could allow the user to do things like copy and paste, select all, submit the form, etc. The fact that we're still trying to resolve this problem and, you know, you have Android where the problem is just completely resolved. <laughs> 
Man, I love, I love mainstream Linux sometimes. As for mistake number two, bad synchronization. What should happen if you're entering two words into a text field, but the application lags for a moment? If your answer is the application should show both words, then I agree with you. Except this is forbidden in my protocol. The text input protocol I came up with will drop events a lot for that reason, and you'll end up with missing letters. That's bad. But they did it for a reason. An input method must be aware of the text inside of the input field, if only to present the user with autocomplete suggestions. I came up with a protocol which carries the state identifier with every request. So this is what that looks like. Initially you start with no text and the user wanted M. So they pre-edit M and commit zero. Okay. Then the application says, okay, here's M, here's one. We're done now. Every event of an input method pertains to some state. So the application can reject events if they apply to text which is no longer there. Now let's say there is some lag in this process. You start once again pressing M that is committed at zero. Now the application is supposed to get back to you straight away. In this case though, it doesn't get back to you until after you've also written O. Now because the commit does not equal the state, one does not equal zero, this is then ignored, meaning the O is going to be dropped. Whilst this is what happens, this is obviously not the intended behavior. So when the input method sends two events at once and both apply to the original state, that being no text, then after the first event is applied, the original state is already gone and the second event is automatically invalid. That's wrong, I hear you say. Why not just let the input method override state changes? It would only be a problem if the user is typing into the text field from another source, and this is such a contrived case that it's not worth caring about. To this I say, I don't want to mandate which use cases are contrived or not. Initially, that was my only reasoning behind this aspect. But before Fostum, I came up with an actually realistic use case two people editing the same text field. We don't even have to get into Wayland seats. It's already a thing in collaboratively edited web documents in things like Google Docs, for example. The text may change here while you're typing there. Should your input method automatically override the other person's edits? This is a hard problem and I have no solution to it. The reason for the talk is the developer is aware of these problems. However, they were moved to other work, so there has been very little progress on those fronts. The last change to the new text input protocol is two years old and adds my four-year-old commit. Yeah. Yeah, there's not really um a ton of work being done at this point. But hey, now that people are aware of it, maybe somebody's going to feel like, you know what, this is the problem I want to take up. And maybe these problems will be addressed. I don't know though. I'm not the one who's going to be doing it, that's for sure. But maybe, maybe you're the one. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Do you make use of some sort of input method? Whether that be to type Japanese text, whether you use it on your phone, whether you use it for handwriting or some other method, I would love to know. And if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrubs, the Libera Pay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me and Wayland.